When you build web applications, a common scenario is to display a list of items. For example, a list of names, a list of products, a list of courses, and so on. So what we want is to repeat some HTML for each item in the list. In this video, let's see how to do that in React. One of the best things about React is that it relies heavily on the JavaScript language itself and not introduce new methods to manipulate and render data. If you are an expert in JavaScript, you probably know that we can use the map method to quickly iterate over an array and return a new array with the desired changes applied. If you are not aware of the map method, let me quickly show you how it works. I'm here at the MDN docs for array.prototype.map method. You can see that the map method creates a new array with the results of calling a provided function on every element in the calling array. So in the example, in line one, we have an array of numbers. In line four, we call the map method on the array. The map method accepts a function as an argument. And of course, what you see here is an arrow function. There is one parameter called x, and in the function body, we return x multiplied by two. The entire operation is then assigned to a variable called map1, which is then logged to the console in line six. If I run this code, you can see the expected output. So what the map method does is go over each element in the array and apply a transformation specified in the function body. In our example, we have an array of four numbers. So the transformation function is executed once for each of the four numbers. On first execution, the parameter x will contain a value of one. It is transformed to one multiplied by two, which is two, which you can see here in the output. Second execution, we have x is equal to four, which is transformed to four into two, which is eight. And similarly, nine into two, which is 18, and 16 into two, which is 32. So we have a list of numbers, and we are able to return a list of numbers after applying some transformation using the map method. This is pretty much the concept behind list rendering in React. The only difference is instead of a transformation like multiplication, we will be transforming into JSX. Let's understand how that works with a simple example. Back in VS Code, I am going to create a new file called name list.js. Within the file, I am going to use the React snippet RFCE to create a new functional component. Within the component, I am going to create an array of names. Bruce, Clark, and Diana. And in the return statement, I will add an h2 tag to display each name using the array index. Names of zero, names of one, and names of two. Back in app component, I will include the name list component. Make sure to import it at the top. Now, if I save both the files and take a look at the browser, you should be able to see the list of names. Although this works fine, we know that this really is not a proper solution. So let's see how to use the map method to render the list of names. I'm going to go back to VS Code and in name list component, let me remove the h2 elements and instead begin with curly braces. Remember, 
the map method is JavaScript code which needs to be evaluated. And curly braces are the way to do that in JSX. So within curly braces, array.map is the syntax. So names.map. The map method takes in a function as an argument. We will be using an arrow function. The syntax is parameter followed by the fat arrow followed by the function body. The parameter, I am going to call it as name instead of x. You can name it anything you want to, but I recommend naming it something relevant to your code. Now the fat arrow symbol followed by the function body, which will be the transformation. What we want is for every name, return an h2 tag with the name as the inner HTML. So h2 tag with the name as the inner HTML. Now once you start writing HTML, you need to reuse curly braces if you have to evaluate the JavaScript expression. So even though we do already have a pair of outer curly braces, we need another pair for the name parameter. And that is pretty much it. If we now save the file and take a look at the browser, you should still be able to see the list of names rendered correctly. One change you can do though, if you wish to that is, is keeping the return statement simple by moving out the list rendering logic. So I'm going to declare a new constant const name list and assign the result of the map operation. Then in the return statement, I will simply include the name list in the JSX. So within curly braces, name list. Now when I format the code, you can see that it becomes much more concise. Just a personal preference which you can follow as well if you want to. The other thing is how simple our JSX is right now. Typically, you're going to have a list of objects with a few properties that have to be rendered. In such cases, it is always a good idea to refactor the JSX into a separate component and then use the component in the map method JSX. That sounded more complicated than it should be. So let me help you understand with an example. I am going to replace the names array with an array of persons. So for each person in the list, we now need to render their name, age, and also their skill. We could simply render them in the map method with additional HTML. Let's start with that. Change name list to person list, names dot map to persons dot map, and name to person. In the JSX, we are going to have I am person dot name, I am person dot age years old, I know person dot skill. Because person represents the object in the list, to access the properties, we need the dot operator. So person dot name, person dot age, and person dot skill. Finally, change name list to person list in the return statement. Save the file and take a look at the browser, and it works as expected. Again, there is nothing wrong with the code, but the recommended way is to refactor the JSX into a separate component. And that is really simple. I'm going to create a new file called person.js. Within the file, use the snippet rfce to create a functional component. Remove the JSX from the list component and include it in person.js. So the h2 tag, I'm going to remove it from person list and include it in person.js. 
But how does this component know what the person data is? It doesn't right now. So let's pass that data down as props from the list component. So in the list component map method, include the person component and pass in the person as a prop. So after formatting, we have person list is equal to persons dot map person as a parameter, which is passed as the prop to the person component. Finally, in the person component, we can destructure the prop right in the parameter. So curly braces, person. If you now save the files and take a look at the browser, you should still see the same output. But this time, we are writing better code. The list component is only responsible for rendering the list and the person component is only responsible for rendering the person HTML. And let me tell you, this is also the pattern you commonly see when building applications that render lists of data. All right, we are able to render a list of items in the browser without any problem. At least that's what we think. If I open the console, we see the dreadful red text. We have a warning in the console. Each child in an array or iterator should have a unique key prop. What exactly is this unique key prop? And what does this warning really mean? Let's understand that in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.